A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Brothers and sisters, now Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man, crippled from birth, was carried and placed at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. And when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up stood and walked around and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. From the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, we pro who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Lord Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the truth. Peace be with you. In our first reading, we hear about this relationship between Jesus and the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And Jesus continues to tell us that I am the way and the truth and the life. And so what this means for us is that Jesus should affect the way that we live our lives that Jesus should affect the way that we respond to truth, that Jesus should affect and determine which way we go in life. In the first reading in the Acts of the Apostles, we hear about Peter and John healing a crippled man. He is looking for money, and they say, what we do have we will give to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, stand and walk. Now, if, if it were merely our goal to be concerned with spiritual truth and spiritual healing, then it would have been enough for them to say, what we have we give to you, believe in the name of Jesus Christ, and you won't have to worry about not walking. In fact, elsewhere in the New Testament, it says, how can you say to your brother who is without food, God bless you and be well fed, if you do not also feed him? But what the apostles do, what Peter and John do, uh, do, is that they heal the man and proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ. So that the man believes in the name of Jesus Christ because of the healing. The man believes that what they say about Jesus Christ is true because what they are saying about the world is true. This is why the church and Christians have had political positions. This is why the church and Christians 
have to stand up for the truth in their day-to-day life. Whether it's against the evils of exposure in ancient Rome, whether it's debating what is a just war, whether it is what we should do for the poor, what we should do for the sick, what we should do for the elderly, what we should do for the unborn, what we should do for the stranger, what we should do for the prisoner. Jesus tells us that we must act, that he has given us the way that we are to act in regards to all of these different issues. If Jesus is the truth, it is not enough to say, I have the spiritual truth of Jesus Christ, and his spiritual truth does not affect my political life. Now, if we look at this word political, political, if we go back to the Greek, the idea is political or rational. This idea uh, of a, a man as a political animal or a rational animal, meaning so rational, somebody who can think, Political, somebody who interacts with other people. So that what politics means is merely the interaction of one person with another, of one person with society, of the church, with society, of society, with an individual. It is this interaction between peoples. Now, there is a difference between being political and being partisan. There's a difference between being political and being partisan. It is partisan to say, I am against the Emperor Nero because uh, I am uh, for the Emperor Caligula. And so everything that Nero does, I will condemn as bad. And everything Caligula does, I will proclaim as good. That is being partisan. That is judging people based on party. That is judging people based on um, themselves rather than than judging their policies. Rather, you can say, I don't think that Herod's policy on dealing with resurrect with um with christians is good i don't think the policy is good that is political it's dealing with policy it's dealing with relationships between peoples this is not partisan and so christians we must be free to be able to say a is good B is bad without having to fall into saying, I believe A because my party believes A. I believe B because my party believes B. This is what it means to be political but not partisan. So what does that mean? Going back to the scriptures. In the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter and John are saying we need to heal this person, they're saying that his sickness is negative, that it needs to be healed, that he needs to be taken care of. It is not a condemnation of any one political party. It is not a condemnation of the Romans uh, in, in for a uh, Uh, in favor of the Herodians. It is not anything like this. It is saying this person needs help. We will help him. We will speak for the truth. When we look at the gospel, we say this is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We are dealing with facts. We are dealing with issues. We are dealing with policies. And it is uh, important for us to be people of the truth who can speak about these things with truth and who can distinguish between things that are political and things that are partisan. 
that we can be people who are able to say, I like this policy from this party and this policy from this party because this policy is true and this policy is true. Why? Because as Christians, we can belong in no real sense to any party, to any organization, because we belong to Christ and we count everything else as loss. Christ is our way and our truth and our life and nothing else is.